New reporting from The Post is shedding light on Paula Broadwell's path from North Dakota homecoming queen to David Petraeus' biographer. It's a picture of ambition and occasional exaggeration culminating in the scandal that has dominated the news all this week. Ann Guerin and Greg Jaffe wrote the piece and join us now uh, to talk a little bit about what you guys discovered. Uh, number one, we all knew she met Petraeus first at Harvard, was studying there, but we've learned more about the circumstances of her studies and why she left. Yes, she's um, often described as a, a Harvard doctoral candidate or a Harvard researcher. Um, but we learned in the course of doing um, this story that she actually never completed uh, her Harvard uh, doctoral dissertation. Uh, she did receive a master's degree from Harvard, but she was asked to leave the, the doctoral program uh, because we don't know exactly what happened, but the, her, her work wasn't apparently up to, uh, to Harvard snuff. Greg, another episode two years later in 2009, General Stanley McChrystal is putting together his Afghan war strategy, and Paula finds occasion to try to get involved in that in a way. Right, exactly. At this point, she's um, moved on to uh, King's College London, where she's picked up her doctoral studies there. And it's, this is another instance where it's hard to sort of know e exactly how what happened, but, um, you know, she pulls together a team of sort of top-tier foreign policy folks here in Washington under the aegis that General McChrystal has asked her to, to pull together a red team to vet his strategic assessment, which was this much anticipated in 2009 um, assessment of sort of where's the war going and, and, uh, and what's needed uh, troop-wise going forward. Um, and it's not 100% clear that he asks her, um, uh, and it's not clear that the the assessment actually happened. The, the folks in McChrystal's office suggest that she was not asked, is that right? Well, the folks in McChrystal's office suggest that, uh, that she uh, was eager to do it, um, and, and they were reluctant um, to, to have her do it because they worried whether she had the sort of the foreign policy chops to pull together this team. The picture that more broadly comes out of your piece is someone of great ambition who's sometimes just pushing the envelope to try to get what she wants. There are examples big and small. One is about this fitness award at West Point, Anne. Yeah, this is another thing that's very often just attached to her name, that she won this this uh, uh, award for being the, the fittest person uh, in her class, um, and uh, West Point disputes it. Uh, last thing, Greg, in your reporting of this, talking to people that have had these interactions with her. Did your impression of her generally change? Um, I'm not sure it did. No, I mean, you know, it's funny. Uh, all of us as reporters had interacted with uh, Paula um, prior to this uh, uh, scandal breaking out. You know, she was a person that we all kind of saw around Washington. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure it, it did uh, change significantly. You know, there's some pos there's a, a good amount of positive about her. She's a you know a, a relentless net networker. She's always trying to sort of get people together who she thinks might share common interests in foreign policy to kind of advance a particular project. She does a lot of work for veterans. Um, uh, she's got a lot of people who like her in Washington, uh, frankly. Um, but no, I'm not sure it did did change. Now that you say that, um, she's. I think I ended not too far from where we started. Okay. Well, I know it was a lot of work to finish from where you started. Uh, so thanks for that, and thanks for uh, sharing the details of your reporting.